In this playlist and the associated chapter, we begin talking about some topics that are kind of essential to computer science and they give us the ability to make our programs far more powerful than what we've been able to do so far. And these are the concepts of abstraction and polymorphism. Now, to a certain extent, we've already done abstraction. We just haven't really done all that much with it. The basic concept of a function is, in a way, an abstraction. So let's go ahead and let's create a new package here. I will call it polymorphism. And we'll just go ahead and make an object that I'll call sample code. We can put whatever we want inside of here. So you can think of squaring a number in concrete terms like 3 times 3 or 5 times 5. But we can also abstract that concept and we can make a function called square that takes any number and gives us back the square of that number. So in some ways, just being able to define functions or methods is an application of abstracting. We've taken what had been a concrete idea, take one number it, one number and multiply it by itself, and change that into the general concept of we can square any number. We've also seen the ability to pass in functions, and this gives us another level of abstraction. So for example, if I have uh, If I want to add up all the numbers, be, or add up a, a bunch of numbers, um, let's go with, well, let's just say they're going to come from user input. So I want to sum some values. I want to say how many numbers I want to sum up. We're going to make them be doubles. And I can write a nice recursive function that adds up the values just by saying, well, if the number of things I want is less than one, then we're done, so I'm going to return zero. Else, I'm going to return double, or read double, so some new double, and we'll do an import to make it so that's not deprecated, plus what we get if we sum n minus one values. Let's go ahead and do an import for our standard input. So this will calculate a sum of a certain number of values. What if I want to calculate the product of a certain number of values? Well, I could take this code, I could copy it, and we could modify it so it does a product instead. So we'll take the product of the values, let to change this. Other than the name, what has to change? Well. So we're not taking a sum, we're taking product, we need to change the plus to a multiply. And we also need to change the base here, because if you're doing a product, you're doing multiplication, you start at zero, well, it's always going to be zero. So the base value for our product has to be one. Using a function, I can abstract the concept of what's going on here, and I can make a function called combine values, which will take an int for the number of things I'm combining, and then it's going to take some other stuff too. And right now I'll put some question marks there that Scala will not be happy with. It's going to give us back a double. And it'll look similar to what we've had before. But we need to figure out how to change it. So instead of sum, I'll call combine. So what else do we have to pass into here? Well, we want to focus on the things that changed between these two different functions. So for example, the zero changed to a one here. That's pretty easy for us to add as an argument. I'm going to add an argument called base. That is a double. And when I call this recursively, I will also have to pass in the base. And we'll just make it so instead of, for the base case, instead of giving back zero or one, we give back base. That way, whoever calls this can vary it. So that part is now abstracted. The other thing that changed is the plus sign changed to a multiply. Now, how are we going to abstract that? Well, that's really just a function. Plus and multiply are functions that take two arguments and give us back a value. So you can think of this as the operator 
which is a function that takes a double and a double and returns a double. And then I can change this here. So instead of saying whatever plus whatever, I call op on the two things and I change my recursive function to op. So this is now an abstraction that allows us to do sums or products or find minima or find maxima. In fact, we could do a whole bunch of different things as long as we're able to combine the values to get something that we want uh, at the far end. So that's the general idea of abstractions. We can, we can take and go from something that was a concrete implementation that only did one thing for us and change it so that it can do multiple things for us. Now, in this playlist, we're going to spend a lot of our time working on one particular type of abstraction, and that is polymorphism. And what is polymorphism? Well, uh, the name comes from the Greek meaning many shapes. In programming, polymorphism means many types. And while we made this combined values abstract in a certain sense, we abstracted over the functional way that it works, it still only works with doubles. Okay. Through polymorphism, we want to gain the ability to write code once that works with many types, ideally, effectively, an infinite number of types. And that doesn't mean you're actually going to have an infinite number of types, but what it means is that you could always add one more type and the code would work for it. So there's no, there's no actual limitation on the number of types that it will work with. An example that I like to use for this is sorting. Okay, so I'll just use a bubble sort because, well, it's really easy to work, or to, for me to, to write up, <laughs> and I rarely mess it up, though it, it has been known to happen. So the bubble sort is just a very easy sort to write. In case you don't remember, we have a loop that's going to go over two indices. The first one is going to go from zero until the length of the array minus one. And then our second counter is going to go from zero until the length of the array minus one minus the value of this kind of outer loop, this outer generator that we have. And all we want to do is on each pass through, we want to look at adjacent elements. And we want to say, okay, if, a, if the array value at j plus one happens to be larger than the array value or smaller than the array value at j, that means that these things are out of order. Because okay. I want to have the smaller item come, uh, come first, and if the smaller item is second, they're out of order and I need to swap them. So I do a little swap. I make my temporary equal to the array sub j, the array sub j equals the array sub j plus one, and then the array sub j plus one is equal to the temporary. So that's a bubble sort. Okay. But this is what I would call a monomorphic bubble sort. It works with one type. It works with doubles, nothing else. So if you wanted to sort ints, what would you have to do? You would have to copy this code and then change the word double to, to int. In that case, nothing else would change. In fact, we could change to string, and all we'd have to change is the word du double becomes string, and this works. If we change to something else, we'd probably have to alter the comparison a little bit, uh, because the less than works for doubles and ints and strings, but for example, if this was an array of a case class, we wouldn't be able to, to work with that. So through polymorphism, we want to be able to write a sort function that can work with multiple types as well. So that's our goal. Our goal is to learn better ways to abstract things, and in particular, we want to learn how to abstract them over types so that we have our polymorphic code, and that will give us a, a fundamentally greater amount of power in how we do our programming in Scala.